everybody. Welcome to Gamecock Central Radio Baseball Report with Gamecock legend Kip Balknight. I'm Emerson Phillips. Carolina picking up two midweek wins this week, a 5-2 to two victory over North Florida on Tuesday. And then the Gamecocks really busted out the bats in a 15-2 to two win over Winthrop on Wednesday. So the Gamecocks have now won four straight ball games after dropping the season opener to BMI. And South Carolina is set to take on Charleston Southern in a three-game weekend series beginning today at Founders Park. Kip, give us your impression on the Gamecocks' two wins, 5-2 to two over North Florida and 15-2 to two over Winthrop. Well, obviously both games had great pitching and uh, very good defense, and the bat certainly exploded Wednesday night against, or Wednesday afternoon excuse me, against Winthrop. So uh, all positives there. I mean, there's a lot that, that takes place when you can get ahead in games and not that these non-conference games are always easy. I mean, you saw a bunch of nail biters over the last several years for the Gamecocks, even playing at home against what some would say some lesser competition. But there's a lot of parity now in college baseball. But getting up in those games allows Mark Kingston to be able to, you know, use the a lot more pitchers, and they get to find out going into Southeastern Conference play a lot more about their pitching staff than just being able to throw five, six, seven guys. I mean, their, their, their goal is to get 9, 10, 11, 12 guys in the games to find out what they have. Also, to just keep guys and get good work for them and not overextend them early on in the season. And uh, from what I've seen so far, it, it's the, the staff is very, very promising, and uh, they've been used in great ways. John Gilreath got the start for the Gamecocks against North Florida. He worked four innings, gave up no runs, just one hit, four strikeouts, and one walk. And then it was Sawyer Bridges who came on and worked two innings. Bridges picked up the win. T.J. Shook came on in relief, and it was Eddie Demurius that got the save for South Carolina. Noah Campbell, two for four with two runs. T.J. Hopkins, three for five with an RBI. And Jacob Olson hit a solo home run in the bottom of the second. So the Gamecocks beat North Florida 5-2. to two, And then South Carolina had a big offensive day the following day, Wednesday, against Winthrop, a 15-2 to two win. They got a six-run second inning highlighted by a grand slam by Hunter Taylor. And it was the bottom of the Gamecock lineup, very productive on Wednesday. LT Tolbert, Justin Rowe, and Hunter Taylor combined to go 7 for 11 with 11 runs knocked in. So it was uh, – Logan Chapman, the freshman, making his first start for the Gamecocks. He picked up the win with a predetermined pitch count start. He went three-plus innings, gave up three hits and an earned run, four strikeouts for Chapman. Gage Henson pitched three innings of relief, gave up just one hit. Shook, Parker Coyne, and Hunter Lomas each pitched one inning in relief. So the Gamecocks beat Winthrop 15-2. to And, Kip, the season-opening loss to VMI was very disappointing. You know, it's a strange game for the Gamecocks, and they weren't able to come from behind to beat uh, VMI in the opener. But they've won four straight, and now Charleston Southern comes in with a 2-2 two and two record. And the Gamecocks uh, rolling right now with four straight wins. So talk about uh, what Coach Kingston will be looking for against the Buccaneers this weekend. First pitch, 4 o'clock Friday at Founders Park. Well, the big the big deal for today is obviously seeing Adam Hill coming off uh, one of his worst starts maybe ever as a Gamecock, and um, I don't think they're worried a bit about Adam Hill. I'm personally not either. I think that he will come out and, and, and pitch uh, with a lot of confidence. I think he just got away from trusting his stuff a little bit the other day uh, in the opener. Um, having said that, without talking to him and being in his mind, I did, you know, I do think there were some mechanical things going on there, and those are things that you know I can guarantee you they're working on in his side sessions in between starts, and um, you know, they just want to keep the same approach they have right now at the plate. It's really, really good. Uh, they're uh, they're driving in runs, you know, they're hitting with runners in scoring position. They still need to work on that a little bit, but that'll come. I think the approach has been great, and um, just I think a really, really exciting. Uh, start to the season despite the loss to VMI in the opener I mean, we're talking about a team that I saw Emerson that had some really really good arms and if I'm not mistaken I'm pretty sure they just knocked off Virginia uh, that's VMI um, so I mean it's uh, that you know that could be a tournament team in, in my opinion so I don't think it's that bad of a loss especially the way they responded and I uh, love the way they're swinging the bats early and they're certainly uh, throwing a lot of strikes as well, and, and doing a good bit, doing a good bit better than, uh, in my opinion, than they, they were doing the last couple of years on the mound. 
Start times 4 o'clock Friday, 2 o'clock Saturday, and 1.30 on Sunday for South Carolina and Charleston Southern. We're going to have sunny skies and warm temperatures. Game time temperatures should be in the low 80s all three days. So looking forward to some good weather at Founders Park this weekend. And all three games, if you can't make it out to Founders Park for this weekend series, you can watch all three games on the SEC Network Plus. Birch Antley and Kip Balknight on the call for the SEC Network this weekend. So Charleston Southern comes in 2-2. and They drop 2 out of 3 to Delaware to open the season, and they beat Savannah State on the road on Tuesday. They beat them 7-5 to in 12 innings. So, Kip, a great weather this weekend, and we're looking forward to some Gamecock baseball. Should be a fun weekend. Yeah, it should be, Emerson. You know, I think um, the one thing I've seen, or many things I've seen, but one thing that really sticks out to me this year so far is little things. I've seen so many little things just watching guys in the dugout you know, I, you look at Carlos Cortez and him getting off to a slow start. And when Hunter Taylor hit the grand slam, literally Carlos Cortez was the very first guy out of the dugout and, and with a lot of passion and energy and true excitement. Nothing fake about it at all. And I've seen a little bit uh, more of a um, uh, pissed off is, is about the uh, best word I could use. They, they played with a little bit of an edge this year so far and and if they can do that even on midweek games against the 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 lesser competition if you will if you will that to me tells me that mark kingston has done a wonderful job of getting in there and getting the culture back that was built under ray tanner's era and and guys playing with a little chip on their shoulder uh they're a little ticked off maybe at how things went last year and we're seeing majority of the lineup the same from last year and I just think it's a I know it's early I know it's only been five games a lot of people say oh well they're facing you know maybe not as good a competition as they'll face in the SEC I'm well aware of all that but we weren't we weren't producing runs and and taking and having at bats like we're having now uh and and it's 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 fun to watch and good to see and uh job well done so far by Mark Kingston and the rest of the staff and Skyler Mead, is, is, I just can't go without mentioning him. He's done a wonderful job as well with the pitchers, and uh, they seem to be trying to, uh, you know, attack guys early, and uh, just just so far so good. And uh, should be a great weekend for baseball. And come out to the Ray and and watch the Gamecocks. Gamecocks in the middle of a ten game homestand to open this new season under new head coach Mark Kingston. Next week, South Carolina's got another matinee Tuesday at four o'clock against. Furman at Founders Park, and then we're into the Clemson series already, Kip. Founders Park again on Friday night for the Clemson Tigers, 7 o'clock first pitch. Then the series heads to Greenville Floor Field, 3 o'clock start Saturday, and Sunday at Doug Kingsmore in Clemson for a 2 o'clock first pitch. So Furman on Tuesday, and then one of the biggest series, one of the biggest rivalries in college baseball, Carolina and Clemson next weekend. Uh, the only thing I can hope is we can get some similar weather for that Clemson series. That'll be a, a lot, a lot of fun, I'm sure. All three stadiums and uh, would be filled filled to capacity and be a great environment. So hopefully we can keep that weather. And Clemson's obviously a great ball club. But then Mark Kingston said something the other day uh, in the press about focusing on just playing it one game at a time. And you hear that all the time. But I, I could tell he truly, truly meant it. And I think he shared it with his players a lot. Today they got an opportunity to go 1-0. and And let's do that. If you keep it simple – and I think back to the 2000 season when I was a junior and we won 50 games in the regular season, something I, I just don't know if could ever be repeated again in the Southeastern Conference. It, we, that's the attitude we had. I mean, we literally went out just to play hard. Every single opportunity we had to win a game, we literally refused to lose. We wanted to win. And, uh, again, early on in the season, I know it, but we're seeing this team uh, uh, have that mentality, and it's fun to watch. Clemson's off to a 4-0 start this year. They swept three from William & Mary to open the season. They beat Furman 12-4 to midweek this past week. They've got Dallas Baptist at home for three this weekend, and they will take on Winthrop on Tuesday. So the Gamecocks turn their attention to the Charleston Southern Buccaneers for a three-game set this weekend. Again, 4 o'clock Friday, 2 o'clock Saturday, 1.30 Sunday, all three games on the SEC Network. And then uh, Carolina will get Furman on Tuesday 
and that Clemson series coming up next weekend. So, Kip, we're looking forward to talking Gamecock baseball with you. Hey, good luck on the TV call this weekend. A lot of folks listening today will be tuned in, I'm sure. Thank you, Kip. Sounds great, Emerson. Good Gamecocks. All right, that's Kip Balknight, winner of the 2000 Golden Spikes Award, college baseball's version of the Heisman Trophy, and he's with us all season long talking Gamecock baseball here on Gamecock Central Radio. I'm your host, Emerson Phillips. We'll do it again next week. Thanks for being with us. Thank <laughs> you.